Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about Newton's laws of motion, and these are basically three separate statements that explain how and why objects move or stay at rest. Newton's first law of motion states, if the external net force is equal to zero, the object will maintain its state of rest or continue to move at constant velocity. This is also sometimes referred to as the law of inertia. Now what is inertia, you might ask? Inertia is the property of matter that causes an object to resist changes in motion. Inertia, which is referred to as I, is actually directly proportional to mass. So the more mass an object has, the more inertia it has. Now really quickly, I'm going to remind you about the difference between mass and weight. So mass is an inherent property of the object that does not change, and it only concerns the amount of matter that's within the object. Whereas on the other hand, weight varies depending on several different factors as explained in a previous video, and the gravitational force on an object is synonymous with the definition of weight. So before moving on to Newton's second law, let me just give you a quick example of inertia to better understand. So suppose a large bear is chasing a small deer. Now in this case, which animal has a larger mass? Obviously the bear which means he also has more inertia. So what would give the deer the best chance of escaping the large bear? Since the smaller deer has less mass and thus less inertia, if it were to navigate through a zigzag pattern through many different turns, it would have the best chance of escaping the bear because the bear has more inertia, more resistance to change its motion, so it would be much harder for it to maneuver these turns, increasing the chances of the deer of escaping its predator. Newton's second law is F equals ma, which means that the external net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object. So through this equation, we can see that F is directly proportional to both m and a, but that m and a are inversely proportional to each other. So this means if one of the factors were to increase, the force would increase as well. Whereas for a constant force, if you were to increase the mass, then acceleration would have to decrease. Here are some quick sketches of graphs. So as you can see in this first graph, F is proportional to A, so if F increases, A increases. On the other hand, mass is inversely proportional with acceleration, so if mass were to increase, acceleration decreases for a constant force. And then in the third graph, the acceleration versus the inverse of mass on the x-axis would give you a linear relationship. So if the net force does not equal to zero, the object will accelerate in the same direction of the net force. And we know this because mass is a scalar quantity and has no direction. Whereas when the external net force of the object is zero, the object is said to be in equilibrium because all the forces balance out. This can either mean that the object is at rest or that it's traveling at a constant velocity. Now a quick side note over here, since F is equal to ma, we know that the SI unit for force is Newton. Now, mass, the SI unit is kilogram, and we know that the SI unit of acceleration is meter per second squared. So 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. Last but not least, for Newton's third law, it states that for every action force, there's a simultaneous reaction force equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And this is sometimes also known as the action-reaction law, which states that the force of A on B, for example, is equal to the negative of the force of B on object A. It's important to note here that action-reaction pairs act on different objects. So again, let's just do a really quick example. Over here I've drawn a quick sketch of a guy holding a rope and pulling a car on one end and an elephant on the other end. Let's say in this system that nothing is moving, so everything is in equilibrium. So let's go through these four examples together. So the force of the elephant on the ground is equal to the negative of the force of the ground on the elephant. The force of the elephant on the ground would be the gravitational force, as we know this is synonymous with the weight, equal magnitude but opposite direction, the force of the ground on the elephant would be the gravitational attraction in the opposite direction. So something I forgot to mention is that the action-reaction pairs act on different objects and they're of the same type. So the force of the car on the person would be the tension force that pulls the person to the left, but the force of the person on the car would be the tension force that pulls the car to the right. So as you can see, it acts on different objects. Similarly, the force of the car on the ground is equal to the negative of the force of the ground on the car, and the force of the person on the ground is equal to the negative of the force of the ground on the person. Okay, so now to consolidate our knowledge, let's go through some examples and work through them together. 
So I'm going to start off with examples from my high school notes. So there will be one for each law, and then we'll go through some of the chapter 2.2 questions from the Nelson textbook. So starting off with this example from Newton's first law, you're given this diagram here. So there's tension acting in three directions. You know this angle over here is 35 degrees, and you know that the weight of the box is 15 newtons. So the question is asking us to solve the tension in the string A, B, and C, and we're going to let the upwards direction be positive. So there's actually two free buddy diagrams that you can extract from this diagram, which are the free buddy diagram of the box itself and then the free buddy diagram of this knot over here. So for the box, there's only two forces acting on it, the force of tension of rope C and then the force of gravity acting down on it. For the free buddy diagram of the knot, we know there's the force of tension of rope A, and if you remember, since this is 35 degrees, and there's that Z law in math, then this is also 35 degrees over here. And then there's the force of tension of rope B acting on the knot, as well as the force of tension of rope C. So the first thing we can do is actually solve for the force of tension of C, since we know everything in this system is in equilibrium. In this case, the net force is only in the y component, and we're letting upwards be positive, so FTC minus FG, and we know that's equal to zero since it's balanced. So FTC would be equal to FG when you bring it to the other side, which would mean it's equal to 15 newtons since we were already given that. So now that we know the tension in string C, we can use that to solve for tensions A and B using the free body diagram of the knot. So here we're going to let the upwards direction and the right direction be positive. So starting off with the x component of the knot, it's going to be FTB minus the x component of A is cos, since it's your adjacent side, so cos 35. Since it's in equilibrium, it's equal to 0, so FTB would be equal FTA cos 35. Now for the y component, It'd be FTA sine 35, since that's your opposite side, minus FTC, which again is equal to 0. So FTC is equal to FTA sine 35. Now solving on this side for FTA, FTA is equal to FTC divided by sine 35. We already solved for FTC, so we can actually calculate this right away. So 15 newtons divided by sine 35 is 26.15 newtons. And let's say it was 2 sig figs, so 26 newtons. Now that you have FTA, you can actually solve over here. So 26.15 newtons cos 35, which gives you 21.42 newtons, which would just be 21 newtons. So here's a second example from my notes. So a food pack has a mass 23 kilograms, and I pull down on the other side of the rope with a force of 300 newtons. What's the pack's acceleration? So of course, first you start off with a free body diagram, and in this case, there's only one component to work with, which is the y component, and there's the tension force pulling it upwards, but the gravitational force pulling it downwards. So we were given in the question that the mass is 23 kilograms, and since you're pulling on the rope with the force of 300 newtons, that's your force of tension. And the question is asking us for acceleration. So we're going to let upwards be positive. So the net force would be in the y component, and we know that's the force of tension minus the force of gravity. And from Newton's second law, we know that the net force is equal to ma, which would be equal to ft minus fg. So isolating for a, ft minus fg over m. And you have all the information, you would just sub that in. We know that the force of gravity is mass times gravity. And since we have the mass, which is 23 kilograms, gravity is constant at 9.8 meters per second squared again over the mass, which is 23 kilograms, and this gives you 3.24 meters per second squared. So this last example from my notes deals with Newton's third law. So it says, Alvin and Ben stand on frictionless skates and push against each other. Alvin, who weighs 40 kilograms, ends up going at velocity 2 meters per second west, and Ben ends up going at velocity 1.7 meter per second east. What is Ben's mass? So we know that the mass of Alvin is 40 kilograms. We're solving for the mass of Ben. We know that the final velocity of Alvin is 2 meters per second west, and the final velocity of Ben is equal to 1.7 meter per second east. The initial velocity of both the boys is equal to zero. 
Again, with forces problems, you always start with a free body diagram. Here's Alvin's free body diagram, and here's Ben's free body diagram. So Alvin obviously has the force of gravity acting on him, as it acts on all objects. And we know there's also the force of normal, since the y components balance out, since he's not moving vertically up or down. And since they pushed on each other, Alvin ends up going at a velocity 2 meter per second west, and this is caused by the force of Ben on Alvin. So this is FBA. For Ben, same thing, the force of normal, the force of gravity, but this time, he goes at a velocity of 1.7 meter per second east, and we know that's because Alvin pushed Ben, so it's the force of Alvin on Ben. And note here that they're equal magnitudes but opposite directions, and that they act on different objects, but they're also the same type of force. So we know by Newton's third law, we know that FBA is equal to the negative of FAB, and we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration, and we know that acceleration is equal to the change in the velocity over change in time. Now the change in time in which this occurs is the time that Alvin and Ben push on each other, and we know that the time of A is equal to the time of B, because they pushed each other and then went in opposite directions. So the mass of Alvin and the acceleration of Alvin is equal to the negative of the mass of Ben and the acceleration of Ben. Since we have that the acceleration is change in velocity over change in time, we know that the initial velocity was zero. And we also know that their change in time is equal to each other since they were in contact for the same amount of time before pushing off of each other. So the time also cancels out. Now we know that ma v2a is equal to the negative of mv v2b. v2 is the final velocity and v1 is the initial velocity. Note that once we get to this step, the only quantity we don't have is Ben's mass. So isolating for Ben's mass, and we're going to let e be positive. Now just subbing in those numbers, isolating for mb, you get that negative ma times v2a divided by v2b is equal to the mass of Ben and then we just simply sub in all the numbers we have, and since we let east be positive, west is negative, and from that we get that the mass of Ben is 47 kilograms. Now moving on to the chapter 2.2 questions, starting off with a few theory questions and then we'll do one practice problem. Number one says a snowboarder is sliding downhill when she suddenly encounters a rough patch. Use Newton's first law of motion to describe and explain what will happen to the snowboarder. So if you think about this scenario, this person is going downhill on her snowboard, and we know that her velocity is this way. Now even though she encounters a rough patch, which means that her snowboard comes to a stop, as the snowboarder is going down the hill, she's traveling at the same velocity that the snowboard is traveling at, due to the law of inertia, which states that an object resists changes to its motion. So when the snowboard stops, the snowboarder will continue to travel with the constant velocity that she had on the snowboard. This would cause her to fall off the board and probably fall face forward. This is a similar type of theory question, which is number two. You are sitting on a bus moving at 50 kilometers per hour east when you toss the ball in front of you and straight up into the air. The ball reaches a height close to your eyes. Will the ball hit you in the face? Explain. So you're sitting on the bus and you throw your ball upwards here. Applying the same law of inertia, you can tell that the ball will not hit you in the face. And the reason for this is because when you're sitting on the bus, both you and the ball are experiencing the same velocity in the forwards direction as the bus. And according to Newton's first law of motion, due to inertia, again, which is the resistance of objects to change their state of motion, the objects will continue to move at constant velocity when external net force is zero. Because of this, you know that the ball and your face will maintain the same distance apart from each other, and so you'll never get hit in the face. We're going to end it off with question number eight. So two 5.2 kilogram masses are suspended as shown. Part A asks us to determine the tension in each string. Part B asks to determine the reading on the spring scale. And then part C asks, how would your answers to A and B change if you replaced one mass with your hand and held everything at rest? Explain your answer. Since the masses are equal, I'm just going to draw one free body diagram over here. We know there's the tension upwards direction and then the gravity in the downwards direction. Letting upwards be positive, the net force is equal to force of tension minus the force of gravity, which is equal to zero since they're in equilibrium. So Ft is equal to force of gravity, which is mg, plugging the numbers in that you know, 
and you get 50.96 newtons, which is 51 newtons with appropriate sig figs. So what would this spring scale read? The spring scale reads the tension, so it would just be 51 newtons. Part C asks how would it change? So if you replace one mass with your hand and held everything at rest, you know that you'd have to exert that same force, which is 51 newtons, to hold everything in place. So this is sort of a trick question because your answers to NB actually would not change at all because the force that your hand exerts compensates for the removed mass. These examples were fairly straightforward. Next video, we're going to be focusing on applications of Newton's law as well as solving more complex problems, so stay tuned.